All right, so look, man. Now, first and foremost, shout out to Kendrell Taylor. He the one who let me know about this topic. He hit me in my Instagram comments. Did you see that interview LaDu did on Boss Talk? Talking about three. Also confirming things you say on your channel. So I went over and checked it out. Haven't seen the full interview yet. But I did check out two clips of it. And we're going to talk about it. But just like Kendrell, man. If y'all see a topic you want me to speak about, just let me know. Now I'm not promising nothing, right? Let's get that out of the way right now. So calm down. But if it's something that catch my interest, hey, we gonna talk about it, and I'ma shout you out in the video. But uh, yeah, a few days ago I made a video about Mo3 and his ops, Yalabizi and his homeboy, pretty much breaking down my opinion of why the beef between Mo3 and them never ended. You know, I broke down the boxing match that never happened, showed a few receipts, pretty much a summary of that video. Mo3 challenged both of his ops to a boxing match, 250000 on the line, and whoever wins, donate some of that money back into Dallas, Texas. But Yalabizi declined that match, and his homeboy did as well, the Freddy Krueger dude. And the reason I even gave a breakdown of that situation in the first place because I saw Sean Cotton doing the interview over on J Main's channel saying how the beef would have never ended because Mo3 wasn't going to end the beef. But in all actuality, it was the other way around, and my video kind of broke that down. But my guy, right, HSM LaDude, that's Mo3 cousin. He kind of confirmed most of the stuff I was saying in that video. The boss talk one-on-one -on -one people was asking him, do you feel like a fight could have just happened and the beef could have been settled from there? The dude goes on to say, that's what Mo3 tried to do. He tried to throw hands with them so they could go their separate way. But they didn't want to do that. And that's what kept the beef going on. It wasn't Mo3 not trying to end the beef. It was them not willing to have that boxing match and end the beef. I even showed y'all screenshots of Yalabizi Homeboy saying how even if they have the boxing match, it's still going to be smoked. So again, for all of those people, TZ, you don't know what you talking about. You ain't from Dallas. Me and LaDue from Dallas, and he was there. Now what, Smarty Pants? TZ, you not even from Dallas. Man, and y'all not from Chicago, so don't never let me hear you say nothing about Lil Dirt. You not from Dallas, so you can't talk about Mo3. Man, shut up. You can't talk about Mo3. Mo3, 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 Mo3. Shut up. Don't make me say it five times like Candy Man. He might just pop up on you. Boy, I hope the ghost of Mo3 come back and slap y'all in the back of y'all head. But my bad, I got carried away, right? Back to the video. The dude confirmed I knew what I was talking about. But there's no surprise, right? I mean, even before the boxing match, Mo3 pulled up on this dude at his, uh, at his shop in Oak Cliff ready to fight, right? I mean, Mo3 was all on Instagram live. I'm on my way to Oak Cliff. I'm coming to beat you up. Get ready. Man, they look like one of those old cutscenes from WWF Attitude. I'ma beat you up, brother. And then Mo3 get there. Here he come walking out the shop with a gun in his hand about as big as Mo3. So we already know he was bluffing about that boxing match, right? He told Mo3, put up $250,000 and we could set this boxing match up in five days. Mo3 put that money up in five hours. And you never heard that guy say anything about a boxing match again, right? He backed out of it. His exact words was, I'll get in the ring for that money, $250,000. We can set it up in five days. And within the next five hours, Mo3 responded, I got my money, T. Diddy. Come on, let's set it up. And it never happened. So that's that. Ladoo said it for himself. I mean, the guy was with Mo3 when Mo3 tried to uh, fight him at his shop. Hell, Ladoo even claims that he pushed uh, Yalabizi homeboy that day. So he would know better than all of us. But yeah, I just hate that narrative, man. Everybody trying to make it seem like Mo3 was starting beef. Mo3 was antagonizing beef. Mo3 never was willing to end the beef. Man, Mo3 was dissing them. They was dissing Mo3. Some people from Mo3's side, their bodies was getting dropped. And the same for their side. The only difference here is Mo3 tried to find a solution. $250,000 boxing match. We walk our separate ways. But they didn't want to accept that boxing match and end the beef.
I know it's easy as hell to try to rewrite history when somebody is dead and can't really speak for themselves. But man, if it's one thing about Mo3, that dude put everything on the internet. So even though he's not here, his point could still be proven on his behalf. But yeah, man, cut it out. Y'all be trying to make this guy sound like the most evil person that ever walked the streets of Dallas, Texas. Putting all of that blame for that beef on him when he was the one that was actually down to end it. I mean, Yellow Beezy fought Rainwater. Me, by myself. I beat him up. That's right, baby. You better tell him. I beat him up. That was Mo3's favorite part right there. If he really wanted that beef to end, he could have just fought Mo3. All of those dudes should be held accountable in that situation. Equally, too. Don't try to lie and make it seem like he was hating and jealous of y'all. Oh, he was jealous of me. Jealous? Man, as soon as Mo3 sold out the House of Blues, the first thing y'all could do was hate. Let's be real. Oh, that's just the House of Blues. Well, go sell it out then. How about it? If we talking about jealousy, let's be real. Mo3 Shot Us Forever album came out. Oh, this one sounds just like his other ones. But he jealous. Okay, this dude had two albums chart on Billboard's Top 200 in one year. Osama and Badass Mo3. What does he suppose to be jealous about? Again, I just don't be understanding these narratives. But anyway, man, how y'all feel about this? Let me know in the comment section, bro. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell, man. Hey, man. Follow me on Instagram. TZF Baby. 252. And y'all make sure y'all go rock with uh, HSM Ledoux Music. I think that guy's pretty talented. Gotta step it up or not. But Mo3 definitely rubbed off on him. Uh, go check out Lottery. Stuck in the System. And I'll say Bad Habits. Those are probably three of my favorite songs by him thus far. You could probably throw Jail Phone in there as well. But yeah, he got Instagram too, so y'all follow him over there. HSM, I think it's underscore Ladoo. Don't quote me on that. But just put in HSM Ladoo. You will find him. Oh, and by the way, I just saw that Rainwater posted some cover art. It looks like for Mo3's album, Legend. But you know how he is. I, I wouldn't keep my hopes up for it. But he did just post his cover art, what is that, about an hour ago? So if he does announce new Mo3 music, or even if he hits me up and let me know, I'll be sure to let y'all know as well. But long little Mo3, I'm gone. Bitch, I'm in the streets. Fuck this industry. Bitch, I'm in the streets.